round about this time of year, we're all thinking about getting a bit fitter on the bike. And as much as we hate admitting it to ourselves, that is going to mean a fair bit of work. Now, traditionally, this has involved going out and riding what we call base miles. But recently, a new kid on the block has appeared. So how does training, and I mean any type of training, work? Well, believe it or not, what you're trying to do is physically change your body by damaging it. So it kind of works like this. You go out on a bike ride, and while you're doing that, you're placing extra demands on your cardiovascular system and your muscles. So when you get home, you relax and recover, and while you're relaxing and recovering, your body is repairing that damage. But it doesn't just repair it to, to the point of where it was when you started that exercise, it actually repairs it beyond that initial point. And this is how we get fit, and the technical term for this is called the overload principle. Traditional old school winter training has meant going out and doing what they call base miles. So that usually means two or three rides a week for an extended period of time. So you'll be going out and doing two to three hour rides per ride. And you'll also be doing those at a fairly easy pace. And normally that's what they traditionally have called the, uh, the aerobic zone. So if you want to put a heart rate figure on that, that's between 70 and 80% of your maximum heart rate. So how many of these traditional base miles are you going to have to do before you start feeling fit? Well, obviously that is going to depend a lot on you. But for me personally, my general rule of thumb is between 1500 and 2000 kilometers or between 75 and 100 hours in the saddle. Now, these will usually take place over the three months of winter. So if you want to break that down even further, that's going to mean between five and 700 kilometers a month, or between 25 and 30 hours a week in the saddle. And that's obviously quite a lot of time to devote to getting fit. Now, I'm in absolutely no doubt whatsoever that this traditional method works. I've been cycling for over 40 years, I've been using this method myself and getting good results with it. But I find that as I'm getting older, I have less and less time to devote to it, plus I'm less and less inclined to go out in the bad weather that we normally have over the winter. And consequently, my fitness is suffering a little bit. Luckily for me though, there's some new thinking around which may mean that I might not have to go out and devote quite so much time to my fitness. This new thinking is called HIT, uh, and HIT is actually an acronym which stands for High Intensity Interval Training. So basically what this means is that you'll be going out for shorter, more intense rides, and you'll also be doing intervals on those rides. So again, very short periods of intense work and you'll recover and then you'll repeat the intervals again. So the big question is, which of these two training methods is the most effective? Now I'll be honest here and put my hand up and say that I personally don't know because I've never really pursued the HIT method. But back in 2015, the University of Kent did some tests. They got one group of cyclists to pursue the HIT method and they left the other group of cyclists to pursue the base training method. And at the end of the test, there wasn't really much of a difference between the two groups. So instead of going out and doing hours of riding a week, the group that were pursuing the HIT training were finding that they were getting similar results after only maybe two hours of riding a week. So assuming you were that way inclined, how would you personally pursue the HIT training? Well, what you have to do is turn the traditional base mile triangle on its head and you start with a very, very short, very intense period of training. You then move on to a slightly longer period of, say, sweet spot training, and then you eventually end up at a very similar place 
to the base mile training, so doing longer rides at lower intensity and you do far more of them. So what are the advantages of HIIT training? Well obviously the big one has got to be time. Because you are only doing very, very short, very, very intense periods of exercise, at least in the initial stages, you don't have to devote hours and hours to it. And consequently, you can do them on a turbo trainer. And in fact, I would say this is probably the best method because you can structure it much, much better. And also because your longer rides are going to take place later in your training period, you've also given the weather a lot more chance to improve. So that when you go out and do your longer rides, you're not doing it in the cold and the rain. Now the downside of HIIT training is that they are so full on and hardcore. They're very, very physically and mentally demanding. So you have to kind of find that from somewhere. And because they are so physically hard, you also run an increased risk of injury. But going back to the traditional base mile training, yes, okay, they are quite time consuming. And more often than not, you're riding them in the winter time when it's cold and wet and you don't want to spend quite so much time out in the bad weather. But on the upside, the pace of them isn't that intense. You're riding quite easily uh, and sometimes it can even be quite good fun, particularly if you're out and about with your cycling chums. At the end of the day, if you put the correct amount of effort in, you're going to get similar results from each, the hip training or the traditional base mile training. Which one is best for you depends very much on you, the sort of person you are, how much time you've got to devote to your training and the sort of riding that you eventually want to do. So if you found this film useful, please like and share. And if you'd like to get the most out of your cycling, please consider subscribing for my regular weekly uploads. Thanks for watching.